Hey, we're back. We're the Wrestling Boys. I'm Goose. I'm Logan. And we're here to bring you some interesting uh, uh, wrestling news, especially... You, 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 I told you, like, get get together a show, and it's like, you came back with a list. This freaking... I, I'm like, oh my gosh, we got a lot to talk about today, so... Yeah, um, so there's a lot of news I came across. So, let's get... Because over the over this past weekend, there, you, there were like... I, I hate to start off with a morbid kind of thing, but, you know, we'd like to get this out of the way. And that is there are four deaths in the wrestling in the industry wrestling world to this week. The biggest one um, I, you saw was was Nikolai Volkov, who was probably, you know, he was a former uh, WWE or actually it's just say WWF uh, tag team champion with the Iron Sheik. Um he was one of those big guys. He, he uh, obviously you know played the Russian persona uh, in the '80s when we were still having the Cold War. So he was a great heel at the time, a great big guy. He, I know you didn't get a chance to see him wrestle except for on, oh, no. on YouTube. Oh yeah. But um, but I, I mean I consider um, I consider your Volkov and the Iron Sheik one of those tag team champions that were really good that are kind of forgotten. Um, because uh, and they were really great heels. They, they they were these they were the the heels that went up against um, the Rockers and the British Bulldogs. And I think the British Bulldogs. No, I don't. I'm trying to remember if the British Bulldogs um, were the ones that got the belts from them. But it was they were. He was a really good wrestler. He he uh, he shocked everybody in one paper. I don't want to say pay per view. One event where um, he. Um, he always came out and sang the Russian national anthem, and he he split from his from his Russian uh, uh, tag team partner at the time. They'd gotten in a big feud, and everybody expected that the partner was going to be the one to turn face. And instead, uh, the partner comes out, sings the Russian national anthem. Volkov comes out, says, "I can do this better than you," and then he it turns around and sings the U.S. national anthem. Really? It just surprised everybody. It surprised me when I saw it, and everybody started cheering and, and clapping and putting their hand. And he didn't get through halfway through the national anthem when his his former tag team partner attacked him, and, and it became uh, he turned face. He wasn't a face very long because he'd been a heel for so long, but he he turned face. I think just at the right time toward the end of his career, and he was um, you know was one of those guys, Hall of Famer. Uh, I think he'll be um, sadly, sadly missed. And then you came back out I mean, back later. I think no more than a couple hours later, and said, "Oh, Grandmaster Sexy died." Brian Christopher. That was pretty shocking. Yeah, who's actually Jerry Lawler's son? Uh, he came back yeah. really briefly when uh, who was it that was having a feud with Lawler? It was um, Michael Cole. Michael Cole, that's right. Oh my gosh, I forgot. I forgot Michael Cole. How could I forget Michael Cole stepping in the ring and looking like a goof? <laughs> that dumb freaking orange onesie with the thing over his ears. And yeah, with like looked, the amateur wrestling looked, mask thing. I swear, he looked like that guy that tried to be a wrestler in high school and just couldn't cut it. Yeah, he, he brought him back. And did they say how he died? Um, he was in jail for a DUI, and he attempted suicide by hanging himself, and really? then he was hospitalized, and then he later died. Really? I mean, that's sad altogether. I know that, uh, um, I don't know, how, I mean, it doesn't say how, uh, how many DUIs he does have been. Usually, usually when you get... I wouldn't think that he would hang himself over a DUI, but I mean, that sounds just tragic that he would do something like that. Um, and then you come back to me late, and, and this was like all weekend. He comes back, he comes back to me again. And he goes, "Oh yeah, Brickhouse Bro Brown, 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 Br Brickhouse Brown." I've never even heard of this guy. Yeah, but he was another star in like the '80s and '90s. Okay. Yeah, I hadn't even heard of him, but apparently, like some of the older wrestling stars. Of course, wouldn't know him because they're wrestlers. Mm -hmm. So he might probably was around during uh, the you know, when Gorilla Monster was wrestling. I never heard of him. I heard of Bad News Brown, but I never heard yeah. of Brickhouse Brown. So okay, did you just say what he died of? No. No. Okay. 
And then, of course, this is just this morning you come to me and you say, you, you ask me, do you know who Trevor Lee is? And the name was familiar. And he says, yeah, his dad passed away. It was Tracy Cadelli. And uh, and then that name rang a bell to me because I remember Tracy Cadelli. I, I don't think he wrestled much. I think, but he was instrumental in training a lot of the, the wrestlers that are coming up. Um, you, you were telling me, that he, who was it that he, he trained? Um, the Hardys and the Hurricane. The Hurricane. Now, the fact that he, you know, first of all, the hurt, you know, the first of all, if you if you train one of the greatest tag teams of all time, who have now turned into one of the best singles competitors of all time, that says a lot. I mean, you know, if anything, he can hang his hat on the fact that he trained the the biggest one of the biggest tag teams ever. Um, but uh, it's sad. It's sad. It's it's kind of a sad day. It's kind of a sad thing when. And I kind of jokingly said, well, you know, they happen in threes, you know. And then, of course, there's like one after the other. You start coming, oh, look, this person died. I'm like, so our hearts go out to the um, families of, of, of Volkoff and Christopher and Brown and, and uh, Kideli. We hope that everything goes well uh, in, your, in your time. And, um, and uh, really, really looking forward to seeing if any of these guys are going to get a tribute tonight on Raw. <laughs> Most likely it'll probably be Nikolai Volkov yeah. or Grandmaster Sexy. Yeah, maybe. Uh, Grandmaster Sexy, uh, he was one of the wrestlers that went through the Attitude Era. Yeah, so he was, alongside um, was he, Scotty Too Hotty and Kishi. Was he the one that had the worm? or was That was Scotty Too Hotty. Scotty Too Hotty, okay. I can never, those guys like melded together and I can never remember who had what. All right. Um, now you came up, now you come with me and you said that, um, with some news that Vince McMahon no longer wants to be on TV because he thinks his time with the company is over. Really? Because you're still screwing with it, okay? Um, and he's old. He's old. You well, already that I agree with. He's old. He's what? He's in his seventies now. Yeah, he's in his seventies. Um, good grief! I mean. Vince McMahon no longer wanted to be on TV because he's old and his time is over with the company. I don't buy that for a minute. <laughs> he's still screwing with the company. Uh, in, in, in point, in, in case in point, who's the, who's who's headlining the Universal Championship at SummerSlam? Hmm. Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar. Okay. How many times have they wrestled already for this? This is their fourth their match. Fourth match. Okay. First of all, it. I mean, first of all, this wouldn't be so bad if they had given us a storyline to work with. They haven't given us squat to work with, other than you know, Rain saying he's a part timer. He doesn't deserve the belt. And oh, you know what? Shut up. You failed three times. Yeah. And you're gonna, you might, and the rumor. I'm gonna ask you this because the rumor is they're gonna that 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 Lesnar is supposed to drop the belt to Reigns. Do you buy, first of all? Do you buy it because he was supposed to drop the belt to Reigns back in WrestleMania? Well, you, I mean, actually, I, the first time it was for the WWE Championship, but I can't remember the outcome of that. But yeah, it's just. Then again, it's still they. This is the fourth encounter, and it's still. Stupid that we're seeing this match again because it's just I, I'm a, you know it's gonna be more of the same it's gonna be it'll probably be a really quick match you were even saying we were watching the, the Reigns Lashley match that the, the Reigns doesn't have a bunch of moves to really go to that he has yeah it, it's kind of stupid his signature moves are pretty much his only moves yeah it, it's it's a Superman punch. And a spear. And like that jumping clothesline thing. Yeah, I mean, he's just... Uh, we haven't really seen him... I, I'm beginning because, I mean, I, I had said a while back that Reigns was getting better. His matches are getting better. Now they're getting worse. Yeah. Because he's not... He's only doing the same moves over... It's like watching... Again, it's like watching a video game. It's like watching someone play a video game and he does the same moves over and over and over. Again. Yeah, I was watching YouTube earlier and it's like compared to two in like a 2K game where you can have the matches and you can like pick the like where you have like a full set of signature moves. <laughs> I'm just like, yep, that pretty much describes Roman Reigns. 
Okay, well, it looks like we're good. we are due for a break. When we come back, we got some news on Juice Robinson and the WWE. I guess they're supposedly in contract talks or not in contract talks. Oh, no. WWE <laughs> just said they want him back. Yeah. They yeah. ain't negotiating a contract. Yeah. Well, we'll talk about that on the other side of this break. I'm Goose. I'm Logan. We're the Wrestling Boys. We'll be back right after this. Introducing the new California State Penitentiary Bologna Sandwich. Jail food sucks. Don't let your family eat jail food. perfect until it's not we understand that life has its changes as your family grows we're here to help grow with you because taking care of your family is important to you and important to us your story starts here with cornerstone mortgage At the time you were arrested, you were served with a DS-367 temporary driver's license. It's good for 30 days, but if you don't act within 10 days, at the end of those 30 days, your license will be suspended. It's important for your lawyer to contact the DMV for you, set up a driver's license administrative hearing so that your license is not going to suspension. That's something here at Brain Law we do for you. I'm Goose. I'm Logan. We're the Wrestling Boys. We're talking to you from the beautiful Bakersfield Music Hall of Fame at KernCast.com. Before we go into our next topic, we want to let you know you can catch us. Uh, if you miss us here, you can catch us on SoundCloud, iTunes. You can get our, uh, you can get our other shows, uh, our past shows on YouTube, on uh, the KernCast channel. Uh, just getting more and more. On, and you might even be able to catch some of our uh, podcasts on, uh, on uh, Twitter and on Facebook. Um, so, when we left, first, when we left, we were talking about, you know, that, that I guess apparently WWE wants Juice Robinson to come back to yeah. WWE. What did Juice say? I ain't going back. Yeah, piss off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the only reason they want him, well, I mean, this is why I'm thinking, is because now he's the champion. Right. He's being, he's successful now. And they're realizing, oh, wait, now New Japan's? Like bringing him success. Wait, we should we, do we, that. Yeah, it's like, we should take him from them. Yeah, and make him look like an even bigger star. And he was like, "No, I no, was treated I, like crap when I was there the first time. Why should I even go back?" And, and his matches in New Japan are absolutely phenomenal. I mean, shoot, we were, one, of the, one of the matches I got I mean, you were watching, I got a glimpse of was a match he he had with uh, Kenny Omega. Oh yeah. Which you were telling me it was like one. Of, this is one of the best matches I've ever seen. I mean, this was. Yawn. <laughs> not about the match. Uh, not about the match. Uh, but but um, he's become one of these guys that has just come into his own. He's got his own. He's got his own persona that just meshes with New Japan. Yeah. And all of a sudden, one of the most unique compared to like any other star. Yeah. In I, the company and like all around. I you know. I think what they figured was, you know, hey, we've we we got uh, we got EC3 to come back to us. We got the road, uh, not the war, the road warriors, the war, the war generals, the war, the war raiders. I don't think they were ever in WWE. I don't think they were WWE, but they, but they got them to come from New Japan. And so they're just like, hey, let's, we got people from Impact to come to yeah, us. Let's, let's steal the New Japan yeah, stars. I'm, I'm actually kind of happy that the Juice told me, like I said, piss off and yeah. stay in New Japan. I think he's he's found a home there. I'm, I mean, um, 
and now the New Japan Pro Wrestling is starting to find a footing here in America. I think that um, I think WWE is really worried because you know they're realizing that um, and with Austin Aries holding the belt at Impact Wrestling, I think that they're really they're worried because you know with Raw's numbers going down, they're they're realizing that hey, people are going to go elsewhere for our, their product and. Um, yeah, we're going to, you know, we're either going to have to step up and steal some of these stars to come over or we're going to have to just, you know, actually write better material. Okay, I, I just want to bring up something interesting about mm-hmm. Austin Aries as yes. the champion. You said, like, on Impact, you said he would challenge anyone around the world for he, the title. He came, on, he came on Impact Wrestling last week and he basically came out and says I'm the man and anybody and and, and, and he's basically has, has said that you know if you think you can beat me if you think you're the man I don't care I don't care if you're across the, the, the oceans or what you know what brand you're with if you want to come and wrestle me for this title it's you know it, you come and get it and, uh, and I immediately thought Ooh, Kenny Omega here's a good shot for you to come over and prove that you can kick some ass um but then again, of course, then, you know, Eddie Edwards came out with an Akindo stick and knocked him, <laughs> knocked, him on, <laughs> knocked him on his ass. I was like, whoa. He basically said, hey, yeah, this child ain't going anywhere. He's staying stay with Impact Wrestling. But um, but I, I found that to be interesting because if you think about it, I mean, Austin Aries, I've always have considered, I have, I've considered be, to be one of the premier wrestlers in the world. And I mean, to, to think about matches with Austin Aries like Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho and Seth Rollins and... I don't know, who, do you, who would you like to see? Uh, Okada? I'd like to see Okada. Would be no, but I was even bringing up, like, since Neville oh, left WWE, I was saying to get him go to another promotion, he could accept that challenge and make a shock debut, yeah. which would be kind of like, a, like you know, like spitting in the face of WWE. WWE yeah. Like, you treated me like garbage. I'm going to go to, like, the rival company. <laughs> You know, before we go to our next topic, I mean, let's think about this for just a quick, 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 hot minute. I mean, look at a lot of the of the um, wrestlers that WWE has. I, I don't, I, for lack of a better word, has trashed. Cody Rhodes, Neville. Um, you know, you want maybe, maybe even Chris Jericho. I don't know if Chris Jericho decided to go to New Japan or just. I think he decided to do that. But you know, here was a guy who was. Was big in WWE. Now he's in New Japan, making a lot. You know, um, giving Naito a, a, just <laughs> a hell of a time. A hell of a time. But this has been WWE's. You know, just has been their downfall. They have gotten these great wrestlers, even Austin Aries. They've gotten these great wrestler, wrestlers to come in. They use them up for like three months, and then go. Oh, we got nothing else for you. Yeah. I mean, where's Damian Sandow now? Is he like, I think he was in Impact. Impact. I think he's still there. I just don't think he's doing anything now. I think, yeah. I mean, but here, there's another guy who was like, you know, they who had, who, who the WWE could have just done a lot with, and they piss it away. So, I mean, are you listening, WWE? Mm-hmm. Because I hope. You know, because you've got all this great talent that you're, like, doing nothing with. You're, you know, anyway, so let's go on to the next topic. Okay, so Stephanie McMahon announces with Evolution, the women's pay-per-view, coming out at the end of October, which I thought for sure would have been like Halloween Havoc, which would have been nice. <laughs> Hello? Um, but no, let's cool. do Evolution. Let's do the all-women's pay-per-view. Everybody's all excited about it. Yeah, of course they're excited. It's, it sounds like, you know, and of course with us in the universe, it's gotten, what, mixed reviews? Yeah. This will be great. This will be crap. This- <laughs> yeah. Who cares? It's going to be crap anyway. Crap anyway, you know? Yeah, that was seriously a comment I stumbled across on Instagram. So, but you said that Triple H says uh, WWE is open to more intergender matches after Evolution. This, I don't know what your opinion. This is a huge ass mistake. Hey, it's a big thing, like in like the independent wrestling scene, like with like a lot of other promotions. They have a lot of intergender wrestling, and I mean. I think WWE has started to like catch on to some of the things from other promotions, like 
can't remember exactly what it was that I brought up last week or something, but well, didn't you think? Did, did you show me a match where um, who's Johnny Gargano's wife? Candice LeRae. Yeah, Candice LeRae. She was in a match and she was covered in blood. Oh yeah. And it's like got kicked in the face with a like thumbtacked boot. Yeah, it's just like, I mean, you know, I, I can understand. I can understand it. I don't like it because um, it brings into a question about you know domestic violence and you know violence against women from men and all this other stuff. You probably you might. Be. Trying to adjust it. Okay. okay, I think that's better. I don't know. I have a problem with it too. But um, but that's my issue. Is that you know it brings up an issue of you know domestic violence and you know, violence against women and for, uh, with men and I don't know you know I mean it's good if it's a goof thing with like James Ellsworth who gets his butt whipped by Oscar. You know it's interesting when you know you see a match an older match with you know, Jeff Jarrett in China. But well, that's a classic. It's a classic match. But um, I just worry that this was going to backfire on the WWE because, you know, they want to try new things. Oh, let's do this. You know what? It's, you know. Yeah, I think it would only work with, like, certain wrestlers. Certain wrestlers, yeah. yeah. And, um, like Nia Jax or, like. But even then, do you really want to see Nia Jax get hit by, like, Kevin Owens? I mean that would that I mean, be an interesting it would, match. It would be an interesting match, but I mean people would just start screaming. You know, I don't know. I mean, if I was a guy, I think I'd be really uncomfortable being in a match like that with a woman. I mean, I'm just saying. What do you think? Yeah, it's an interesting thing, but yeah. All right. Before we go to our next break, let's talk about this interesting t- Twitter war between, between Tama Tonga and Roman Reigns. How did this get started? I think Tama Tonga got in, like, Twitter jail when he, like, his account got locked. And then he just said something, and then Roman Reigns responded to it, and then they got in this back-and-forth argument. Okay. And then it was actually pretty funny. They were, like, uh-huh. like trying to roast each other. And then Tama Tonga at the end was like... Yeah, you can just keep going fist cocking. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's, that's pretty much what he's doing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, let's let's be honest. If if Tama Tonga and Roman Reigns were in an actual match, uh, I think Roman Reigns would be a, a puddle of mush in a corner because he'd he get the crap kicked out. Well, I mean, because Tama Tonga can actually wrestle. Yeah, he can actually wrestle. I mean, he's... Tama Tonga, again, if you haven't seen him, I think there's some matches... Um, from New Japan, you probably catch. But he's a badass. I mean, Tama Tonga is a badass. He doesn't look it because I mean he's not as bulked up as Roman Reigns, but he can seriously beat the snot out of him. I mean, you know, Tama Tonga is a badass dude, and I think that um, I think this little Twitter war is just absolutely comical. Is the fact that of all people in the world. Roman Reigns, who wants to get in a Twitter war with somebody. I mean, just think, first of all, Roman Reigns, you've been handed everything. Yeah, seriously. Roman Reigns even went on Twitter saying no one is given the main event. I'm just like, seriously? Um, yes, you are. Yeah, you're, 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 you're the one that's given you're the main right. event. No one else is really given the main event except you. You know, no one's been pushed more than you except for, except for a guy... Who actually, I think, really like like a, a dude that I got to watch wrestle live by the name of Hulk Hogan. Yeah, he was pushed a lot too, but Hulk Hogan was a badass, you know. And um, you know, so l- l- let's be honest. I think that you know. I mean, at least people liked Hulk Hogan. Oh yeah, <laughs> at least the fans got behind Hulk Hogan. Yeah. The only the only people behind Roman Reigns is like all the mostly the women. You know, who like, and the young oh, children. And like, oh my God, it's Roman Reigns! Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so so this I think will be interesting. I mean, because I think eventually Tama Tonga is just gonna just you know, like you show up and go you either put up or shut up. And it's yeah. like, you know, because Tama Tonga is, is a real he's a, he's a dude that I think can really can really knock Roman Reigns around. All right, we're a little over for a break. When we come back, we get some news on the women's title front as far as uh, Alexa Bliss and Carmella are concerned. Um, they might not be having their belts anymore. Nope. Nope. 
We'll see you right after this. I'm Goose. I am Logan. And we're coming from the Baker Show Music Hall of Fame at KernCast.com. We'll see you right on the other side of this. Introducing the new California State Penitentiary Bologna Sandwich. Jail food sucks. Don't let your family eat jail food. Saying that uh, Nia Jax could actually beat Kevin Owens? <laughs> uh, at least that'd be a good match. Now that I think about it. I, I don't know. I, I, I just. I just look at the political ramifications of that. Seth Rollins versus Asuka. <laughs> I, I don't even think Seth Rollins would even go for that. I think. I'm just saying, this is some interesting things that could occur if they are open to this. All right. So, as we tease on the, before we went to break. Um, Alexa Bliss and Carmella are reportedly dropping their titles either at or before Evolution. Uh, what's going on? Um, Finch doesn't like their matches. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think... Neither you know, do I. Yeah, I think Carmella, Carmella has gotten boring. Um, I think her last match um, last week with Becky Lynch really proved how, you know, she just... Does it mean, or does, it, does she just look stiff in that ring against Becky Lynch? I mean, it was just, uh, uh, she just did not, uh, it, she did, I mean, I think it was a good idea to give her the money in the bank briefcase, but I think um, I think her title run is probably coming to an end. You think it's Becky Lynch who takes it from her at the SummerSlam? Oh, yeah. Maybe Becky Lynch, I think, deserves a title again. I think she's really put in the effort to really prove that she can do it. Um, and I think it sets up an interesting dynamic for Evolution, or at least whatever. What's the September pay per view? Do you know what it is? The September pay per view? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I don't really pay attention to the like many of the like monthly pay per views. Yeah, I, it, it, I, I think it, I, one of the things I've gotten kind of bored with is the fact that they have a pay per view every month. It's kind of like, you know, let's just, can we stretch them out a little further? It's like, the know, only reason I would like there being a pay per view every month is so there's a takeover. Yeah, that's true. Because takeovers are awesome. Awesome. They're awesome. Um, what do you, yeah, I think Carmela needs to drop the belt. I think she's, she's just gotten stale. Um, the whole Mela is money thing has just gotten boring. It's just bad. It's, you know, it, and I think bringing in a new fresh. Fresh uh, face and fresh blood into the end of the year, I think, is exactly what they need. Mm-hmm. What about Alexa Bliss? Because she is pr- reportedly the darling. Because they they put that belt on her four, three, four times. Oh, you yeah. know, I mean, and and I think what's interesting is for who's who does she have a match with at SummerSlam? Ronda Rousey. Okay, who? Was, and this is her like third, like televised pay per view. Match and she was deemed what undeserving or the super or the like woman superstar of the year. Yeah, she, that was pretty bad. She was, but she is undeserving. She was named women's superstar of the year by who the fans, really? <laughs> She's only she hasn't even had three matches and you're giving her a superstar. Yeah, okay, so you know, it just tells you where. Yeah, someone's paying for something. Um, yeah. Do you think? Do you think Alexa drops the title to Rousey? Please. <laughs> the 
This whole goddess <laughs> crap is boring. It's, it's run its course. Can we see something else? I think it's, yeah, I, I agree with you. I think I like her because she plays a really good heel, and, and, and it's always good when you have a heel champion, but uh, I don't, I cannot figure out why in the world that, that I mean, of all the people, again, they, they, they gave Alexa Bliss the money in the bank briefcase. Out of all who could win it, you know, okay, I, this Matt, this mic, this mic, yeah, he's having problems with his microphone. People, he's just, every, it's not staying where I want it. I'm sorry, <laughs> um, but you're right. Of all the people that could have gotten it, they, they let her have it, thinking, oh yeah. I mean, if you think about it, SmackDown had it last year, Raw has it this year. Okay, tit for tat, whatever. Yeah, <clears throat> but it's, both of them were on Raw. Yeah, it was like, but Seriously, um, that's stupid. But um, this whole thing is, I think, got, you're right. It's gotten stale. And um, as much as I like Alexa Bliss, I think it's time for somebody else to hold on to that title for a yeah. while. Yeah. Please. Please. Who on, who on Raw would get the title? I mean, do you think Ronda Rousey really needs, deserves a title? No. Who, who deserves the title? Not Ronda Rousey. <laughs> 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 That's not what I asked, but okay. Uh, Bailey. Bailey, yeah, I agree. Bailey, I think Bailey deserves a title. I don't know if that'll happen, but you know, we'll please make hope. it happen. All right, before we close out the show today, you had some interesting G one special news uh, that I was actually shocked because G one G one was a, what a month ago? Or, uh, or actually, no, it was earlier this month. It was about three, yeah, three four weeks ago. July seventh. July seventh. That's what it was. So what's the, what's the what's the latest G one special news? That I didn't even realize what happened. The uh, Hiromu Takahashi. Yeah, apparently, um, from some news I stumbled across, Hiromu Takahashi is still in the hospital after that one spot, that one really dangerous spot we saw in the match against Dragon Lee. Where Hiromu landed straight on the top of his head. Ooh, yeah, I remember that. Okay. And now he's been in the hospital apparently ever since. He's been that at least like eighteen days. 18 that's what days. I heard. Is, what, 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 was, what was he, was it a concussion? Probably. You know, it, it, usually when when a, when a, when a wrestler dro- is, is dropped on his head, and, and Steve, Stone Cold Steve Austin can tell you about this. Um, you 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 get dropped in your head. You suffer a stinger, which is like something that it's like it's like a shot, a shock that goes right for, through the through your spine. It like a, we're literally go from I'm gonna just demonstrate here, right from the base of your skull all the way down your spine to your tailbone, and you can at times you can be paralyzed and go numb. Um, you will lose feeling. Uh, at times you'll have a neck injury. Um, it's quite possible that you, either he suffered a very severe concussion or he suffered a concussion and a neck injury or just a neck injury, but 18 days. I mean, is he in, is he in San Francisco or is he in, back in Japan? I don't know. I didn't say that. Didn't say that? Okay. Um, it would be interesting because I don't – if he had suffered that – let me, let me just be totally honest. There's no way he'd be in Japan because they'd have to fly him back. And I think that he would probably would have suffered – Whatever whatever injury he would have suffered in the ring, I think it would have just compounded if he was in the air. So he's probably in a, he's probably in San Francisco, still in the hospital, still trying to get through. Um, I remember that that was that was pretty horrendous when he got. I was like, whoa! Dropped on. I said, I thought it would have been when he um, got stomped in the chest, you know, when he was hanging from the turnbuckle. And that was also looking really dangerous, but you know, I mean, that was absolutely crazy. So um, he and he. He holds the uh, what title does he hold? The junior heavyweight championship. Junior heavyweight championship. So, um, how long do you think it'll be before you know? I mean, before IWGP decides, you, you either have to defend it or strip it. Well, I mean, it's not his fault. Well, no, no, no. I mean, I, I agree with that. But you know, wrestlers, depending on an injury, if they have an injury and they hold a title. I mean, I think he'll be back pretty soon. Depending on the severity of the injury? Yeah. Okay. You did, and they didn't tell you exactly what it was? It just... Well, I'm guessing that's probably what it was. Because that, <laughs> that was, like, looking like, oh, my God. He could have probably died, died maybe. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, you know. But, you see, that's the interesting thing because, you know, these wrestlers take huge, huge risks. I mean, 
again, you, you, you kind of, I mean, I remember we were watching the Omega Rhodes match later that night. That was, that was, you know, and how, you know, I mean, Rhodes suplexes Omega off the top of the 20 foot ladder and, and, you know, and then, you know, and then Omega throws Rhodes out of the ring to land on a table that doesn't break. And he bounces off the table and lands on the concrete. I mean, geez, oh, Pete's. I mean, these guys take a lot of, I mean, that's the thing about New Japan is they take bigger risks. And, um, and which is something, I think one of the reasons why WWE has gotten a little vanilla because they, yeah. they're, they're so scared of injuries. But um, you're going to get injured. I mean, you could get injured. What was that one move that Triple H where he tore, tore his, uh, his quadricep? It wasn't even like a move or a, it was like a hold or something and it tore. I don't know. I mean, and it was just, and, and he, it, it, it could be just overuse and over time and just something like that happens. But these guys do get hurt. I mean, yeah, you know, you could say it's fake, but these guys do get hurt. Yeah, the injuries definitely aren't they? They do mount um, after you know a short period of time. All right. Anything else, man? My son. No, nope, I don't think we have anything else to talk about. All this right. is all I found. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna watch. Uh, we're, we're gonna come back to you next week. Hopefully, talk more about uh, SummerSlam that's coming up pretty soon. I don't even know when SummerSlam yeah, is. I, right we're now. gonna have to look that up because you know I don't remember when it is, but I know it's coming up pretty soon. Uh, we'll, we'll probably uh, go over some of the ideas for the matches they have coming up. Uh, and any other wrestling news with Impact and New Japan, and hopefully we'll see if we get some stuff from Ring of Honor and some uh, Lucha Underground stuff because we're always looking for more and more wrestling stuff to talk about. So, as we sail on out of here, I'm Goose. I'm Logan. We're coming to you from the Bakersfield Music Hall of Fame and KernCast.com with Blue Sky Media. Uh, we're the Wrestling Boys. Again, we want to thank our sponsors, uh, IOS Bell Bonds, because Jail Food sucks. Yeah. Um, and uh, again, you can catch us on uh, you can catch us on um, on iTunes. You can catch us on SoundCloud. Uh, catch any old shows up on YouTube on the Current Cast channel. We'll be back next week. We'll see you after this. Bye bye.